Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WantCulture.com and you know what, Hollywood loves to be meta and there is a long and glorious history of films referencing filmmaking and indeed other films or actors breaking the fourth wall to confirm some sort of self-awareness. But what Hollywood loves more than that is being remarkably clever with those references. So let's take a look at them today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 incredibly smug movie references you might have missed. Number 10. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, The Fight Club T-Shirt Some films get tripped up by their attempts to mythologise their actors, such as the awful self-indulgence of Only God Forgives. Trust me, when you see it, you'll see it. And that can restrict the actor from offering a strong performance. When a director decides to adopt that agenda, they're basically signing away their ability to get anything out of their lead other than a self-congratulatory showing. It's just not the best way to inspire commitment in a role. And that's exactly what happens in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is an enjoyable, if slightly silly, romp. Which could have been an awful lot better if Brad Pitt wasn't on autopilot for most of it. And the cause of this? Well, it all came down to that mythologizing. As for some reason, Doug Lyman had his supporting actor Adam Brody turn up wearing a Fight Club t-shirt, paying homage to Pitt's best role, while also reminding everyone how much worse Mr. and Mrs. Smith is than Fincher's classic. It's a bit of a backfire for what appears to be Lyman's attempt to celebrate his star, especially since Pitt's performance fails to reach even half the energy or indeed engagement levels that he had in Fight Club. Number 9. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory – Ed Wood in an oddly self-fulfilling prophecy, Tim Burton took the opportunity in his misguided remake of the original Willy Wonka classic to lightheartedly dig at one of his on-screen idols in the shape of Ed Wood. In a sequence that most watchers won't have noticed the implications of, Johnny Depp's man-child Wonka walks past a room full of pink sheep and preempts any questions by saying he'd rather not talk about this one to his collective audience. To the uninitiated eye, it's just another indication of Wonka's madness, but it's actually a nod to infamously awful director Wood, who was also played by Depp in Burton's biopic, who was very fond of pink woolen sweaters. It's clearly meant to be an affectionate reference to Burton's former anti-hero, as well as an acknowledgement of Depp's previous preference of playing unstable characters, but it needs too much explaining and comes across, as a result, as self-indulgent. Number 8. Cedar Rapids – Clay's Omar Impression Partway through the wayward comedy Cedar Rapids that stars Ed Helms, one of his leading actors, Isaiah Whitlock, offers a rather blatant acknowledgement of his most famous and, indeed, most successful role. To scare off some thugs, Whitlock, who played Senator Clay Davis in the iconic show and whose character is an unashamed fan of the show, in a rather self-congratulatory move, offers an impersonation of Wire co-star Michael K. Williams, who played Omar. Now this might be a rather indulgent move by the director, but at least they had Whitlock mimic Omar rather than simply trotting out his own character's catchphrase. So at the end of it all, we do get some fan service for sure, but it does seem slightly reductive, consciously acknowledge work that he's honestly never going to better. Number 7. Die Hard with a Vengeance – McLean's Retirement it's almost hard to remember, but not so long ago, Die Hard sequels were something to be celebrated rather than laughed at. For many, myself included, the third in the series was the greatest of all the sequels, overshadowing the flabby second outing and vastly outstripping both the fourth and ill-advised future installments. Part of that comes down to the writing, which produced a tighter and funnier script, as well as the uplift in scale that makes the threat to McLean all the more pertinent because of the wider ramifications. Returned from retirement, McLean is questioned as to how he's been spending said retirement, to which he responds that he's been smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. On the surface, the line works because it implies that McLean is at a loss since retirement and feels redundant enough to not do anything with his own time. But that ignores the rather clever reference to the Statler brothers' Flowers on the Wall, whose lyrics inspired the response. So rather than just answering for McLean, the script has Bruce Willis respond to the question as well, referencing Pulp fiction, which came out a year before Vengeance and famously featured the bold star singing lines from the same song. If somebody wasn't heartily patting themselves on the back there, I would be remarkably shocked. Number 6. Tango and Cash – Rambo is a Pussy this excellent buddy cop movie opens with a literal bang, with Sly Stallone in hot pursuit of a big-time drug shipment, which the bumbling local police force claim is merely a harmless gas tanker. 
After an angry tirade for working outside his jurisdiction and needlessly pulling over the tanker, Stallone's supremely cool tanger responds to the accusation that he thinks he's Rambo in typically cool fashion. Rambo is a pussy, before confidently firing his weapon into the tanker to reveal that it's full of cocaine as he suspected. Aside from the obvious questions relating to how Tango could have possibly seen a Rambo film when it couldn't possibly exist in a universe in which Stallone isn't an actor, it's a great moment, even if it is a sledgehammer blatant attempt by the writers to insist on their own character's greatness with a comical but rather cheap shot. Number 5. Last Action Hero – The Terminator Along with Scream and Cabin in the Woods, John McTiernan's superlative Last Action Hero probably stands as the finest meta film ever made thanks to its conscious celebration of generic conventions and a very clever commitment to deconstructing them. It's a gem of a film, offering both a parody of the action genre and a celebration of everything that makes it great, with the prize sting in the tail of having one of the world's biggest action stars in the lead. And in amongst the numerous meta-references is one scene that introduced Schwarzenegger's Jack Slater to a poster of one of the actor's own films, but with a very shocking difference. In a video store, Slater clocks an advertisement for The Terminator, starring Sylvester Stallone, a visual joke that represents one of the funniest touches in the film. So why is it smug exactly? Well, the line is very obviously a backhanded compliment directed at Stallone, especially as the script carries the extra punch of calling it his best performance ever. So there's an Arnie movie celebrating the acting of Sly Stallone, but in a movie that he never acted in, presumably suggesting what Arnie's camp actually thinks of Stallone's career. Number 4. Out of Sight – Gecko's Mugshot Long before George Clooney was considered Hollywood royalty, he made Out of Sight, a fast-paced and hugely underloved drama that still stands as some of his finest work. He was on strong, charming form opposite J-Lo as a career criminal called Jack Foley, who gets a little too involved with the US Marshal he kidnaps. At one point during the film, J-Lo's character Karen is watching a news report warning of Foley's escape, which then cuts to show his mugshot. It doesn't even look like him, she grumbles, and the film moves on without a second glance. But there's a reason that it didn't actually look like him, and that's because it isn't him. The image that flashes up on the screen is actually the mugshot of Clooney's character Seth Gecko from Dust Till Dawn, which came out two years before Out of Sight, and which obviously appealed to Soderbergh enough to warrant the congratulatory reference. Quite why this is even included in the film is questionable, but then again the same accusation could be leveled at most self-indulgent movie easter eggs. Number 3. Maverick – Lethal Weapon Maverick might not be the most celebrated of Mel Gibson's career movies, or indeed Richard Donner's, but the western comedy makes for a reasonably diverting watch. Sadly though, it never is quite good enough to get over the decision to reference Donner and Gibson's more famous collaboration, in a way that has now relegated the film to a footnote to that reference. Rather than simply introducing the third Lethal Weapon collaborator, Danny Glover, as a cameo as a reserve nod to the film, Donner instead chose to bring him in as a bank robber who then tries his best in making everyone wish they were actually watching Lethal Weapon. As Maverick and the bank robber face off, they clearly recognize one another, and as if that wasn't enough of a nod, the Lethal Weapon score appears to hammer the reference home a little more, before Danny Glover unnecessarily wheels out his I'm too old for this sh catchphrase to make damn sure that we didn't miss Donna's obvious longing for the vastly superior franchise. Number 2. Charlie's Angels E.T. Of all the problems and missteps associated with MCG's big-screen take on the Charlie's Angels property, the decision to hurtle a naked Drew Barrymore down a hillside was probably one of the least complained about, and in a rather self-satisfied move, the room that Barrymore is forced to break into with just an inflatable flower to cover her modesty is in fact the same living room that appears in her most famous and far less naked early performance, that is, Steven Spielberg's E.T. The set is the same house that was used for E.T., and if you look closely enough, the boy that she interrupts when she enters have a bowl of Reese's Pieces between them on the floor, as another nod to the location and Barrymore's earlier career. And if that wasn't enough, there's even a bloody poster of the same film carefully placed just in view to hammer home the message. And number 1. Be Kind Rewind – Sigourney Weaver Saves Ghostbusters Be Kind Rewind is a curious animal. It's not the most memorable of movies, but it is one of Jack Black's finest roles, before the wheels well and truly came off his career and Hollywood stopped really knowing what to do with him. The film also has this tender message under its hood, and a pretty cool central concept that is genius and is digestible for fans. 
Obviously, the idea of remaking movies and renting them out under the pretense that they are in fact the originals is completely unlawful and attracts the attentions of said law, in the shape of Sigourney Weaver, a studio power and court bailiff who appears to insist that they are in violation of copyright and that all of their stock must be destroyed. The decision to cast Weaver in this role, considering one of the Sweden films is Ghostbusters, feels like an obvious nod to her role in said film, as she seeks to protect her own interests in the original project. It's a hugely tongue-in-cheek moment and could be deemed a red flag provocation to the Ghostbusters right holders if it wasn't for the fact that the references were obviously authorized. So there we go my friends, those were 10 incredibly smug movie references you might have missed. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, that's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work and it'd be great to see you over there my friends. I hope that you're treating yourself well my friend, both mentally and physically. Be kind to yourself because you deserve the best things in life like love, happiness and success and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, alright? You're a massive ledge. Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.